In 2017, Mayor Mitch Landrieu and the New Orleans City Council voted to remove the four Confederate monuments around town. This was an incredibly controversial move. It sparked protests. Fights broke out. And everybody had a really strong opinion one way or the other. But who put these monuments up and why? Was it truly to commemorate Southern heritage or was it just a sinister tactic to intimidate African Americans? Well, I want to just kind of dig into the actual history and find out for myself. So I'm going to take each monument individually and look at the history and the intention behind them. And then I'm going to rate them for racism on the Confederate Monuments Racistometer. Here's how this piece of technology works. We have several categories here. The first is innocent, which means not at all racist. Ignorant, which means they really should have known better. Morally ambiguous, it could go either way. Pretty racist, which is, it, it, is bad, it's bad. And then Hitler, <laughs> which, which really, you know, it just means Hitler. So pretty much right after Robert E. Lee's death in 1870, a group of prominent ex-Confederates here in the city got together and tried to raise some money for a statue of him. It took them about 14 years to scrape together all the cash and the necessary permits and whatnot. And in 1884, they unveiled the monument over at uh, Tivoli Circle in this big, lavish ceremony. Everybody was singing songs and speeches were made. Now, it seems the intention behind this whole ceremony was basically to unite both Union and Confederate veterans. Because, I mean, Robert E. Lee, he was a man who was greatly admired, both in the North and the South, after the Civil War. Seems innocent enough, but the Lee Monument does have a pretty dark history. I mean, just seven years after the monument went up, a xenophobic mob used it as a rallying point, and they then went and lynched 11 Italian immigrants. It's also been used as a, uh, just a focal point for countless white supremacist rallies in the years since. So I'm going to give the Lee Monument a rating of ignorant. They really should have known better. The Battle of Liberty Place was fought in 1874. It was a pitched street battle here in New Orleans between a paramilitary organization called the White League, which is exactly what it sounds like, and the New Orleans Metropolitan Police. The White League was angry because their man, their candidate for governor in the 1872 election had lost. And this was mainly due to the African-American vote. The White League believed that black people did not deserve to have the vote, despite a constitutional amendment to the contrary. Uh, so they stormed into New Orleans, killed 100 people, and took control of City Hall for three days. Now, in 1891, the city put up a monument to the Battle of Liberty Place on Canal Street, which commemorated the White League as martyrs and heroes. In 1932, they added a marker, an inscription, on the monument, which read, United States troops took over the state government and reinstated the usurpers, but the national election November 1876 recognized white supremacy in the South and gave us our state. The inscription remained there unaltered until 1974, when an adjacent marker was added, which read, although the Battle of Liberty Place and this monument are important parts of New Orleans history, the sentiments in favor of white supremacy expressed thereon are contrary to the philosophy and beliefs of present day New Orleans. So that's a pretty flaccid response to an overtly racist monument. I hope nobody will argue with me here if I give the Battle of Liberty Place monument a rating of... Hitler! In 1911, they put up a monument to Jefferson Davis, the first and only president of the Confederacy that used to stand right here. So the funds were mainly raised by this group called the United Daughters of the Confederacy. They were responsible for putting up many, many, many monuments to the Confederacy all across the South. And uh, they had this big lavish ceremony here, uh, just with like with Lee's. They had a band playing Dixie. They had a gigantic Confederate flag made of flowers. Uh, it was really a, quite an event. But any monument reflects the time in which it was erected. And around World War I was an extremely turbulent time here in the South. It was the, uh, the, the era of Jim Crow, was the height of Jim Crow. Uh, lynchings were at an all-time high. And also the way that Southerners were thinking about the Civil War and remembering the Civil War was changing drastically. Now, the United Daughters of the Confederacy, they portrayed themselves as these sort of genteel, charming Southern women. But they were actually in the midst of this propaganda campaign that was really unrivaled throughout all of American history. 
They were some of the real, really, I mean, in many ways, the inventors of the lost cause myth of the Confederacy. I made a whole sort of video ranting about the lost cause myth and why it is just that, a myth, uh, which should be appearing somewhere on your screen right now. So reputable historians these days agree, the lost cause myth, which, you know, downplays the evils of slavery and uh, really kind of romanticizes the antebellum South, really has no basis in fact. But that didn't stop people like the United Daughters of the Confederacy twisting the narrative. I think what's uh, most telling, perhaps of all, is that this whole ceremony unveiling the Jeff Davis statue was a whites-only affair. So this was political propaganda, make no mistake. And I'm gonna give the Jefferson Davis statue a rating of pretty racist. Last but not least was the statue of P.T. Beauregard, which went up in 1915 and stood over at Esplanade Avenue at the entrance to City Park. So Beauregard was a New Orleanian. I mean, he lived much of his life here. He was born and raised in South Louisiana. And I think if any Confederate general deserved a monument here, it would be him. Uh, he also was, a, you know, a pretty complex guy, uh, you know, in a sort of a weird kind of pragmatic way. After the war, he became a bit of a civil rights advocate. Uh, he thought that if white Southerners kept oppressing black Southerners, then North Republicans would get the African-American vote and time proved him right. Uh, you could certainly question you know, whether that was due to his compassion for African Americans or just because he wanted to push his own political agenda. But even so, he did advocate for civil rights. Uh, but here's the thing. The statue of Beauregard was not of Beauregard the New Orleanian or of Beauregard the businessman or Beauregard the civil rights advocate. It was very clearly a statue of Beauregard the Confederate. And it was put up by people with a crystal clear political agenda. You guessed it, it was the United Daughters of the Confederacy. So instead of portraying Beauregard the man, who was, you know, I would say fairly morally ambiguous, the United Daughters of the Confederacy, they decided to portray Beauregard as a symbol of the lost cause, which is undoubtedly pretty racist. So to recap, we have four statues and uh, three distinct ratings. Lee was ignorant. The Battle of Liberty Place was Hitler! <laughs> Jeff Davis was pretty racist, and Beauregard was also pretty racist. So I think this leads to one really unavoidable conclusion. Three out of these four monuments were put up by people who were not just racist by today's standards, but who adhered to a political ideology that was directly opposed to the progress of civil rights here in the United States. So were the Confederate monuments of New Orleans racist? Uh, yeah. One, two, three.